What do road trips gone wrong? Pagan rituals, spontaneous conversion, a very tall cliff, a large burlap sack, and a relative of the Julius Caesar have in common? If you guess St. Caesarius of Terracina, you're right. It's November 1st, and here's a dead Christian you should know about. Our story begins in 85 AD in the great city of Carthage, North Africa, where the apostles have spread the gospel. In this bustling city, a baby named Caesarius, a distant relative of Julius Caesar and also his namesake, is born to a soldier for hire. A childhood spent being surrounded by the teachings of Christianity led to Caesarius becoming a deacon as he entered adulthood. Upon becoming a deacon, Caesarius and his companions decided to depart the safety of the colony in Carthage and travel to Rome. While Christianity had begun to be spread throughout the world, Christians were enduring horrible persecution in Rome. Caesarius was willing to risk it all in an effort to fulfill his duties as a deacon. As his ship sailed the coast of Rome, a storm shipwrecked him in Terracina. But Terracina wasn't exactly the most normal Roman city. In fact, it was pretty famous for the citizens' annual ritual to the god Apollo. In the middle of every year, the city would select a young man who embodied Roman values, handsome, intelligent, and of noble blood. For the next six months, he would be pampered like no other. He would have his every desire fulfilled. And then, finally, the young man would be celebrated as a hero of the city. They would hold a festival in his honor. He would be saddled upon the finest horse with the finest weaponry and tack. He would then process through the city to the peak of Pisco Montano, where he would promptly throw himself and the horse he rode in on right over the edge into the depths below. A sacrifice for the god Apollo. There was no greater honor in Terracina. And this year, Caesarius got to witness it all. Didn't do so passively, though. He complained a lot. For quite some time, too. Six months worth of complaints. His complaints fell on deaf ears. And the following year, a young man named Luciano met the same horrific fate as he crashed into the rocky sea. Caesarius, helplessly watching on, shouted at the priest of Apollo, Fermius, Woe unto those states and princes who persuade by torture and are fattened on the outpouring of blood. Why do you lose your souls for your imposture? Why are you seduced by the demon's artifice? As could be expected, Fermius didn't exactly appreciate this public rebuke and quickly jailed Caesarius. Caesarius waited in a cold Roman cell for eight days before he was scheduled to be taken before the Roman consul, Leonosius. Leonosius instructed Caesarius to repent by sacrificing and praying in the name of Apollo. This demand was met with fervent prayer by Caesarius. Not to Apollo as his judge demanded, though, but instead to the one true God in the name of Jesus Christ. As he prayed, the temple to Apollo collapsed around him, killing Apollo's priest and Caesarius' accuser, Fermius. Rather than release Caesarius, after this obviously miraculous event, Leonosius imprisoned him. After another 22 months in jail, Caesarius was brought to the forum to once again face Judge Leonosius. Once he stood before the consul, Caesarius insisted on praying again. Miraculously, a light shone from the heavens and enveloped Leonosius, who was converted to Christianity and demanded to be baptized upon the spot. He died immediately after his baptism. Witnessing the entirety of this was the governor of Terracina a guy named Luxurious, who also had a small bone to pick with Caesarius. You see, Caesarius had kind of prophesied that Luxurious would soon meet his end on the tip of a poisonous snake's fangs. Not a big deal, right? An incensed, and probably a little bit fearful, Luxurious sentenced Caesarius to die. On November 1st, in 107 AD, Luxurious had Caesarius and another local church leader, Julian, bound together and encased in a large burlap sack. 
They were dragged to the top of Pisca Montano and thrown off into the rocky depths below. Much like Caesarius had watched Luciano leap a couple of years before, but without quite the same pomp and circumstance. Caesarius soon washed up on the shore, where his body was retrieved by the Christians of Terracina. His body was given a Christian burial by Eusebius and was venerated by Christians in the early 4th century. Relics of him and his ministry have made their way throughout Christendom and have been preserved in dozens of churches throughout the world. St. Caesarius surely would have led a different life had he stayed in the city of Carthage. As a distant relative of Julius Caesar, he would have wanted for nothing. But instead, St. Caesarius sought a life of Christian servitude. Caesarius stood firm in his confession against the most dangerous foe to Christianity at the time, the Roman Empire. Caesarius's boldness in the most dire of circumstances remains a long-standing example to the church. And that is why St. Caesarius is another dead Christian you should know about. Oh, and one more thing. Caesarius developed a quick following after stories of his death in 107 AD spread among Christians. But his fame really took off two centuries later. Upon falling ill in the 4th century, the Emperor Valentinian's daughter sought out Caesarius' shrine. Once in the presence of his martyred remains, she was miraculously healed of her sickness. Upon this miracle, the emperor removed Caesarius' bones from Terracina and distributed them throughout the Roman Empire. Saint Caesarius would eventually be celebrated as the patron saint of the Roman emperors, not to mention invoked in prayer against drowning and flooding. Quite the rise from being on the front line of Christian persecution only a few centuries earlier. Thank you for watching Dead Christians You Should Know About. We have a lot of exciting stuff coming up in Season 2. Dead Christians is a publication of Higher Things Incorporated. All research, writing, and recording for this episode was done by me, Patrick Sturdivant. And all video animation was done by Sandra Madden. For more information about Dead Christians you should know about or Higher Things, visit our website at higherthings.org.